This video is about non-deterministic Turing machines that are machines that solve their problems simply by guessing correctly. You might agree that checking a computed solution is often easier than actually calculating the solution. For example, consider this number here. Finding the factors of this number is quite demanding. However, if I tell you that the two factors are 3407 and uh, 3919, it's rather easy for you to compute the, uh, the product simply using pencil and paper. Or consider this graph here. To check whether there is a path through the graph that visits every node exactly once might be difficult. However, once you see the path, it's quite easy to check that uh, this is really a path visiting every node. Now going back to the languages, consider this language here. It's the language of the words of the form WW, where W contains A's and B's. So the important part is that the left and right half must coincide. The problem in accepting the language is, having a given word, we must have a way to somehow determine the first half, meaning we have to find the middle. And we are going to accept this language using a Turing machine that is allowed to guess. This Turing machine will actually guess the middle of the, uh, of the word. Such Turing machines are called non-deterministic Turing machines. This Turing machine here simply copies the uh, first half of the, uh, of the word to the second tape and then matches first and second half. In order to do this, it has to guess where the middle is. And this guessing is done by a so-called non-deterministic choice. The Turing machine in state Q0 can either stay in Q0 and simply copy the, um, the string from tape 1 to tape 2, or the Turing machine can actually change state to Q1 by deciding that it has found the middle. Now let's see how this Turing machine actually works. We start in Q0 and we start uh, copying from the first tape to the second tape until at some point we decide that um, we, we have found the middle and then we take another transition and change state to Q1. In Q1 we go back on the second tape until uh, we reach the uh, left, uh, uh, left boundary of, this, uh, of the, uh, the copied text and then we change state again and move to uh, Q2 and uh, perform the matching between the first and the second tape. Here we check that both uh, uh, subwords, both halves, actually coincide. And we also check that the guess was correct. So the both halves would only coincide if we actually found the middle by guessing. Otherwise it would not work. If we have chosen some part that's longer than the middle, the, the matching wouldn't work. However, if the matching works, then both sets on the first and on the second tape will encounter the blank at the same time and we can move to our accepting state QF. Like other non-deterministic automata, non-deterministic Turing machine accepts if there is an accepting run that leads to an accepting state. This definition of the acceptance for non-deterministic Turing machines leads to the so-called Giss and Check approach. In this approach you first check a solution, in our example the middle, we guess the middle, and as a second step we check if the guess was correct, so if uh, the solution we found actually satisfies the condition. Here in our case the check was matching both halves. Here it is important to note that this uh, checking might not be omitted. The definition of our non-deterministic Turing machine, which is allowed to guess, might give the impression that the Turing machine does whatever we want. This is however not the case. If the guess was incorrect, then our Turing machine may not go into an accepting state. So we actually have to check whether the guess is correct, because if the Turing machine would go to an accepting state, even if the guess was incorrect, then the Turing machine would accept the word, although the guess was incorrect. Now, an interesting question is, of course, how the non-deterministic and deterministic Turing machines relate. We know for non-deterministic and deterministic finite automata that they accept the same class of languages, the regular languages. And this is actually the same for Turing machines. 
for every non-deterministic Turing machine, we can simulate this non-deterministic Turing machine using a deterministic one. And the idea of this simulation is that we go through all the possible configurations of the non-deterministic Turing machine until we either find an accepting configuration or we are done with examining all the configurations. This has to be done using a breadth-first search because uh, a depth-first search might go into a branch that has an infinite loop at the end, um, but there might be another branch that actually has an accepting configuration. That's why we have to uh, do this uh, with a breadth-first search. Even in breadth-first search, this simulation might not terminate at all because the non-deterministic Turing machine has one branch that's infinite and no um, accepting configuration. But the important part is that if there is an accepting configuration, we will actually find it. The search uh, uses a queue. In this uh, queue, we first dequeue the next configuration we want to look at. Then we check whether this configuration is accepting. And if it is, we simply stop and accept. Otherwise, we generate all the successor configurations and put them into the queue. Now let's look into the details of the simulator. We use a two-tape Turing machine, a deterministic one, to simulate a non-deterministic one-tape Turing machine. On the first tape, we have the queue holding all the configurations of the non-deterministic Turing machine that is simulated. For the illustration, I just have CFG on the tape, but in reality a configuration contains the tape content, the add position and the current state. Here we have one example configuration, this one here, X, A, double B, Q, one, double B and three Cs. This configuration is one string and it encodes that we are in state Q1, so the state is actually part of the string here. Left of this state we have everything that is left of the current head position. In our case, it's X, A, double B. And right of the uh, um, state Q1 is everything that is right to the head, meaning that the head is actually positioned on the first B of this string. So this is a convenient and uh, short notation for encoding tape content, head position and state by simply putting the uh, current state at the position where the head uh, is. The configurations have to be separated, of course, and we use two kinds of separators. The first one is the exclamation mark. This exclamation mark marks the head of the queue, and therefore the next configuration we have to process. And the other um, separator is the star. This separates simply two configurations on the tape, on the queue. The second tape is our working tape. Now we want to process the next configuration and the first thing we do is we uh, go to the configuration behind the exclamation mark and check whether it contains an accepting state. If it does not contain an accepting state, we have to copy the configuration from the first tape to the second tape. And after copying, we generate all the successor configurations. As the Turing machine is non-deterministic, there may be more than one possible successor configuration. So we first have to add the new separator in the first tape, and then we start computing the um, successor configuration one by one. And after we have uh, computed all the successor configurations, we have to update the marker, we have to move it one position forward, and erase the working tape. And then we can start all over again with the next configuration. And we continue with this uh, process until we find either a configuration that contains an accepting state or until uh, we have processed all the uh, configurations of the Turing machine. Whereas the last uh, possibility might actually never happen and we might not terminate in our simulator. To summarize, we've seen non-deterministic Turing machines that can simply guess a solution and therefore they are quite convenient to, to use. They have to check afterwards whether the guess was correct, but that's actually much easier in most cases. We've further seen that um, these non-deterministic Turing machines can be 
simulator by deterministic one. However, this uh, simulation we've seen here requires to go through all the configurations. So this simulation might be exponentially longer compared to the accepting run of the non-deterministic Turing machine. So the simulation is not really efficient, but at least possible. So we cannot actually do more using non-determinism, but we might be faster.